Bhagavate Ramakrishnaya Om Salutations to Bhagavan Ramakrishna So the people are going to have no camera, it's not working. Hmm? We are live, but the camera is just not working. Okay. Oh, they, they can hear you. They can hear me, the camera is not working. Well, there is a glitch with our equipment here. And we are working on it. Those on YouTube can hear me. And we will continue our class. So we have subtitled it Active and Passive Chapa. We generally find questions also coming up to me saying that uh, we are doing japa but somehow uh, we don't seem to be moving ahead i have found that there are two reasons one is we are used to when we sit down uh, there is a state of passivity in the body yeah, if you run about and you know, you're active. When you sit down, there's an automatic state of passivity that comes in. And uh, the body understands this. That is a time for to relax. But in Japa and meditation, it is actually a very active state, you've got to forget the signals that are coming from the body to the brain saying that this is the time to just relax, take it easy, it's just a passive state. But no, this is a very active state, japa and meditation etc. is a very active state. Take for instance, suppose you ask somebody to run, run a mile, that person has to expend so much energy and strength. Or you ask somebody to kind of do some, lift some weights, you also find that there is also a lot of strength that is required. You're expending strength. Does that mean you need to kind of expend so much strength while doing japa and meditation? But at the end of 10 minutes, you might feel yourself exhausted. <laughs> That's not the case. What we are generally seeing is we have to understand that there are two types of impressions in the mind. One is the, you can say, impressions of objects and thoughts and things that we have done and all these things. I mean, apart from the spiritual practices. And then we have impressions made out of spiritual practices or devotion or all these things. So there are these two classes of impressions. So when we sit down to meditate, what happens is both these two types, two classes of thoughts, they arise. So we are kind of doing some kind of a mixed bag of japa. Sometimes the mantra is mixed with hundreds of other things. Sometimes Ten things, maybe one thing. So we feel that all these other thoughts are constraining us and we just can't move ahead. And that's why many people say we, are, we have been doing Japa for all these days and all these years and something is like we are just there. No, it is a very, in fact, it's a very active state. It's highly active state. And one of the reasons why we tell the people that you've got to exert a little strength while sitting and doing japa. 
otherwise your body which is all, all, already kind of in the state of kind of passivity and the next thing the mind knows is yeah it has to go to sleep you fall asleep a kind of a drowsiness comes in and you fall asleep ah and in the name of japa then we are finally sleeping okay <laughs> now when <clears throat> we have these two classes of impression one of those impressions have to be kind of held down and for it to be held down you've got to be extremely you can say focused alert whatever you like to call it but you are going to use a little strength but that strength is not something that you are going to expend and it's not going to return back to you in japa and meditation what happens you create a loop of energy you at the moment you spend that energy that thing comes back to you and there's a constant loop that is been created so you don't feel exhausted in fact you feel energetic after you finish your japa etc etc so this is so much for okay now how do we hold the attention okay as i've said the mind is likened to a lake for illustrative purposes only the mind is not a lake okay the <laughs> people go and say the mind is a lake the mind is not a lake <laughs> because the mind is very subtle we just can't understand its nature it's extremely vast and extremely deep so thoughts which emerge from your subconsciousness you don't even know what subconsciousness is because you just can't get inside it and the moment you get inside it you are you're lost with millions of other things so these thoughts they kind of bubble up they come up slowly and then they you have no control over the bubbles at all and as you keep on doing japa slowly what happens is you are now actively doing japa you are now actively engaged in focusing when this happens what what does then the mind becomes extremely placid those bubbles that are generally that are coming they kind of stop yeah that's an amazing thing of the mind all those old thoughts and old concepts and old impressions and everything else they just stop the mind becomes kind of calm so these two classes one is all the thoughts of work karma and everything that you had said and done and thought and remembered and experienced and everything they kind of they are there and then the other type it's like this something like this it's quiet peaceful technically it's called a nirodha samskara the controlling samskaras every time you are doing japa you are not only doing japa but there is an overlay of a control mechanism it's automatic so you are actually killing two birds with one stone every time you are doing japa that is increasing devotion increasing love for god and you are also setting in motion a control mechanism so that japa itself becomes a control mechanism for you and that like i said it now becomes a loop it feeds on itself and over and over and so the mind becomes very placid so many people say oh placidity is passivity no the example swami vivekananda also gives is you know you can find horses running down and then which is better 
holding them in check or letting them run. When you let them run, they'll run fast and say, oh, so very active. But that guy is not doing anything. He's just holding the reins like, okay. <laughs> but the moment the horseman starts pulling in, the horse starts. Horse is also exerting power and you are also exerting power. So that stillness is due to strength being applied. It's a tremendous strength being applied here. So people think, oh, calmness and placidity, there are two states. One is the inactive state. Oh, I'm feeling so calm. That is not what we want in Japa. Say, oh, I'm feeling calm, but I'm so focused. And, I'm, and that focus itself is making me calm. I'm exerting kind of power to pull things inside. Okay. Now the question comes again. Now, what do we pull and how do we pull? Yeah, what do we pull? The, that is the mantra. You're using the mantra in a very comprehensive way. In fact, the, man, the mantra itself is a very comprehensive tool. So using the, the mantra, and as you're keeping on repeating the mantra, you're not letting other thoughts intrude on that. You're holding it firmly. That's a kind of the holding that it's, you're not letting go. Because the moment you let go, as it, like you let go the horses or let go the reins there, the horse will start plunging forward. It's not going to listen to you at all. Simple. So you are going to hold the mantra as you repeat it. But we are here and the mantra is there. No. There is that kind of disconnect that should not be there while doing japa. You have to be consciously repeating. Otherwise what happens is, some of these old impressions of the japa, they go on automatically. Okay. And you, you are also there and you have kind of no kind of connection between what's going on there and then that old impressions of japa to the memory, they are coming and they are getting mixed up with other, um, other impressions over and over and over again. It's, so after you finish, I've, I've meditated for one hour. So actually, you've not meditated for one hour. So to keep the japa kind of pure, pure in the sense of, yeah, just holding on to this mantra and not letting anything come inside is the active state of japa. Okay? Now, how do we do that? It's not, the only mechanism that you can, that you ever can ever have, and the best mechanism is your attention. It's simple. They say you have got to pay attention, and actually you've got to really pay attention. You have got to pay. Otherwise, you're going to not. Okay. So, you've got to pay attention. I mean, there's no monetary value, but there's a spiritual value here. So, let's take up an exercise. Sit down quietly, sit down straight. Close your eyes. Relax your facial muscles, please. Now keep a half smile on your face. You should not have any stress, physical, as you sit down. A body has to be relaxed. If you need to shift your weight around, do that and come and again sit down still.
your eyes are closed but you are as it were gazing at the tip of your nose or the point between your chin or on the chin keep your tongue free don't let it touch the palate now we'll use a simple exercise we'll just use 1 2 3 okay now repeat along with me 1 now repeat it mentally okay you can open your eyes now just when you were repeating that one was two coming here was the number two number three coming no this actually you are holding on to that thought the one you are not interested in one what is one why nothing just a thought has come and you are focused there just one 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 and there you were no other thoughts are coming in this is actually how you got to hold it and when we are repeating that one 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 okay during that time gaze as it were at the number one okay now this is the second part of the exercise you are going to repeat one as well as gaze at the numeral 1 okay focus don't let it move out okay now like before close your eyes sit down relaxed one One, 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 one. Now repeat it mentally while visualizing the numeral. Yes. Now continue. Just now. take the numeral 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 
close your eyes, relax all your facial muscles and all the muscles also in your neck and in your shoulders. Gaze at the tip of the nose as it were or the point on your chin. Jai Shri Ramakrishna Jai Shri Ram Krishna Jai Shri Ram Krishna Jai Shri Ram Krishna Jai Shri Ram Krishna Now mentally Now visualize the figure of Sri Ramakrishna and also mentally keep on repeating it. Hold your attention, don't let it waver. Okay, you can open your eyes. This is the way. It's as easy. Oh, you know, we can do it for maybe half a minute. Maybe I can, we can do it for uh, maybe one minute or maybe two minutes. But half an hour? No. If you can do it for one minute or two minutes, the correct way, you can do it for one hour without any problem. Because like I said, that you uh, creating a kind of energy, an attention loop over and over and over. And that will make it very easy for you to spend the next 58 minutes or whatever in that state of repetition. What this does is it will increase the spiritual impressions, the samadhi or the nirodha impression. And all the other impressions are held in abeyance. The actual, you can say, power of the mantra, which we have been discussing over and over again in some of our previous uh, episodes, that takes over. So you are actually, with every repetition of a mantra, you are also releasing the power of the mantra. You say, uh, well, I have been given a mantra. Sorry, that's not the only thing you've been given. You've been given actually perfection in a, in a seed form, in a mantra form. So this perfection is there latent and you've got to now manifest it or unravel it. And you do it by repetition, over and over. And then that innate perfection, what innate perfection? The innate perfection of the mantra will shine forth. And that innate perfection of the mantra you will find is linked to you on one side and linked to God on the other side. Oh yeah. The mantra now becomes your secret name. You have a name, everyone has a name. Yeah, no. But your secret name is hidden in the mantra itself. And the secret name of God is also hidden in the mantra. So, as the mantra becomes more and more alive, they say mantra chaitanya, it becomes alive. You will find your identity completely changing. 
your conceptions of God has completely changed and you find that the link that the mantra had, you can say, forged between you and God is actually so strong that it has covered everything. And then there's a kind of a final merging between you and God. Then the mantra disappears. It's like, it, it's kind of a sublimation. From a solid state, it sublimates and becomes. So similarly, that's the end of the man mantra. When you have attained that perfection, you don't no longer need that mantra. But till you attain that perfection, you need to repeat it over and over. So you have the mantra releasing its powers, which also brings in another element, which is called the grace of God. It is also acting as a controlling mechanism. And as we know, it's also acting as a kind of a focus mechanism. It's taking off away all the other kind of impression. So you have many things happening together as you repeat this mantra. And that's why uh, when you're doing japa, use that focus, use a little strength for a few minutes, and then see how the ball starts rolling and over. And as you repeat it, you will find that you don't need so much effort at all. It has become natural. So when it becomes natural, it will become part of your first year rhythm of your breath. That rhythm of your breath is then carried all over your body. Then it becomes part of the body's rhythm. We call it a circadian rhythm and all, but that's a biological rhythm. There are inner rhythms of the body. So the mantra will become part of that body's rhythm. Then it becomes part of the mind's rhythm. At that state, it has become natural. It has become you in a way. You and the mantra have merged. There it is. And whatever you do, you will do through the mantra, the power of the mantra. Whatever you say will be, be saying through the power of the mantra. Whatever you will be thinking, you will be thinking through that power of the mantra. So it has become you. This is the end. This is the perfection. Me? No, no. Like you say, that old man must die. The old Christian Jesus said, the old man must die. The old man dies. Okay, A new person is forged in the power of the mantra. So you become a new you. This is your actual spiritual birth. You are done away with all the impressions, the all the impressions of all the hundreds of things, you've done away with that. They, they'll appear to you as like shadows. And you will watch all of them. There's memories, just memories. Okay. They're not going to traumatize you. Now we have thoughts, traumatic thoughts. and <laughs> So many things happening there. You will see everything as just shadows. Unreal fleeting and you will keep on growing and growing into that perfection. So this is the, you can say, the death of the old man and the birth of the new person. This is the perfection. So remember, you need to hold on to a repetition with attention. That is all. For a few seconds, for a few minutes, and then it will keep on. In case by mental repetition there are distractions, use a semi-audible or even if there is no one around, an audible mantra. Keep on repeating. And as you repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, see how things start. The mantra starts 
cleaving its way through all the obstructions. And that is what will happen in the initial stage. Then the mind, which is calm, but calm in the sense of extremely, you can say, restrained, not passive. So this is the active state. And from that, no bubbles of old memories will ever come up. It will remain calm, pure. Okay. Om, peace, peace, peace. So those in, uh, who are just listening to the audio of, on the YouTube, we are extremely sorry that this glitch has kind of taken place. The very last minutes and we are wondering what to do. We hope you can make the best of it. Practice the way it has been spoken now here, as like you have heard. And you don't need to see. You can see me next Saturday again. <laughs> okay. You're seeing that. Oh, peace. Yeah. Ask technical questions now. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, well, well, everybody is talking about live stream Paris and this and that. Can hear you? Okay, all right. Uh, can the question now? <laughs> Can we surrender to the Ishta Devata as a guru or do we need a physical guru? You can salute your chosen deity. Ishta Devata is chosen deity. You can salute your chosen deity as a guru. In fact, the guru represents your chosen deity. At the final stages, you will find them as one. Yes, you can salute your chosen deity as the Guru. Because finally, the Guru is God. The real Guru, as Sri Ramakrishna keeps on saying, is Sachidananda. God only can be a Guru. And what about the human Gurus? They are just channels for that grace of God to descend. Okay. So yes, you can do it. Mm. During casual time, it is easier to bring the deity image to the heart and do japa. But while sitting in a meditation room with eyes closed, not able to bring the image to heart. Uh, if, you are, if you can do it during casual times, as you have mentioned it, do it. You don't have to bother about sitting down in meditation. Let it get fixed in your mind during this casual time and once it is fixed then use the meditation period then it becomes much easier the whole idea I don't I don't care if you have got a set time for meditation and I can't meditate here don't meditate here if you can do any kind of walking or you can say in simple visualization exercises when you are not meditating in a meditative period. So dispense with that for the moment. Keep on doing this casual time meditation. Let it get fixed inside and then you can. can. Oh, the, the image is displayed only partially. You have to fight with the mind. Other thoughts bring, uh, uh, to bring the image. One thing you must understand. Uh, in the heat of the moment, you must be able you must be able to stay calm. No matter what happens, don't get agitated or don't run after hundreds of things. A thought comes to interfere, don't run behind that interfering thought. If you run, that's what the thought actually wants you. It will lead you to the next thought, to a next thought, to a next thought, to a next thought, and there you're gone. You noticed. Yeah. So never run behind a thought. If it emerges, let it emerge and let it disappear. If you try to follow it, you're gone. 
It will take you to Antarctica. It will take you to Mars and it will take you somewhere else also. And by, by the time you say, what happened? No, nothing happened actually. Nothing happened. <laughs> so, don't follow the thoughts. Just keep on focused on the mantra. And uh, the image is not distinct. This will need practice. So whenever you see the image of a mantra or the symbol of a mantra or the image of the deity, try to visualize the whole picture. Okay. The other way is gaze at the picture of the deity from the feet and starting from there slowly go higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. So there is a kind of a sequence that is created in the mind from the feet to the head and then come back. Don't from the head, don't come down from the neck, at the chest, etc. From the head, come back down and again start from the feet. So you are creating a kind of a sequence. So as you meditate, you will find this sequence actually helping you. So start from the feet, then you take the okay, then you take the ankles, and you take the shin or the calf, then you take the knees, and then you take the thighs, and then you take the torso, and slowly, 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 slowly. This is important. A sequence is important. So one thought will merge into the next thought, and next thought, and next thought, and okay. Mm. Okay. Satvik, nowhere to go, nothing to do and completely content helps me to stay with the mantra and its power. Is this good, Swamiji? Oh yeah, of course. You don't need to go anywhere. You need to, you need to do it. I mean, I'm not asking you to become completely inactive. You do something useful. Do something, take responsibilities. But when you are doing japa, etc., just plunge inside. Don't think about any other thing. The, otherwise, what happens is uh, people say, oh, these people, relig religious people, they are so kind of escapist. No, you are not escapist. In fact, you are taking the highest responsibilities. Okay. So, uh, stay with the mantra, stay with this power, and good. It will manifest itself, like I said, through your thoughts and words and deeds. That's a wonderful, you can say. State. Okay. So, can you suggest any hand mudra for beginners while japa? No. We have used uh, some of the previous uh, mantra videos. We have shown how to count. Go to that. You count on the fingers. But generally, when you are doing your japa, I would like you to have your right, you can, the back of your right palm in your left palm, okay? The back of your right hand in your left palm. Or you join your thumb with the index finger, okay? The, this is a kind of a classic posture. So that also can be done. And if you're using a rosary, then uh, you don't need any mudra because you're counting on that rosary. When I do japa, my mind switches between closing, focusing on my ishta, on God as an abstract, God within my ishta or within my own heart. I become distressed about it. If it's okay, this happens. Uh, it might occasionally happen. But you are doing uh, your mantra, uh, japa, uh, on a form. So don't try to bring in right now the abstract concept of God. Just know that yeah, God is infinite and is ever loving and is a compassionate, and feel that deity or the deity of the that whatever you are meditating on, as if it's luminous and smiling. So, it is something that you need to hold on to. You don't have to feel bad. 
So God does not feel bad. The problem is we think God will feel bad. No, God does not feel bad about it. So, just, so you don't feel bad. Keep on repeating this mantra over and over again. So even if the mind switches between focusing on your ishta as an, in the name of form or as an abstract, you can say, entity, try to club both these things together. Yeah, this deity which I am meditating upon is infinite. That's abstract enough. It's existence. Oh, that's abstract enough. Om, peace, 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 in the name of the Lord, Hari. Okay, we had a 